Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you can tell, spring has sprung and my bees are fully busy and uh, very hungry. You might be able to see that occasionally a bee comes in with some pollen. So they are bringing in food from outside sources. They're actually visiting flowers and bringing back nectar and pollen. Uh, pollen, of course, is their protein and uh, nectar is their carbohydrate source. Now, I've been keeping bees here for quite a while and I know that most of this pollen is actually coming off of some aspen trees. And so they don't really produce a lot of nectar, but they got plenty of pollen. So I need to supplement their uh, you know, carbohydrate source, their energy. And to do that, I'm just going to give them a little bit of uh, sugar to get them going for this year. And as you can see, I've got pretty much a truckload of sugar to feed them. You see, I actually found a pretty good deal at one of the local stores. See that uh, 99 cents for a four pound bag of sugar? And so I bought everything they had. And uh, the bees will eat everything I give them, so I say, why not? So I've got a bucket of warm water here. Let's mix up some sugar syrup for them. This is basically uh, artificial honey, essentially. So I'm just going to rip open these sugar packets and dump this sugar into the warm water. I'm going to be adding approximately 50% sugar to water uh, by volume. It doesn't have to be super exact, and that just seems to be the easiest uh, mixture that I can make. So I'm essentially going to fill the rest of this half full bucket with sugar here. There's the last one by the looks of it. I'm just going to stick my arm in here and give this a stir to dissolve all the sugar. And I might have filled the bucket a little too high, but it'll work. Now that the sugar's all dissolved, I'm going to be adding some chemicals to the mixture. Now, two years ago, I would have never done this. You know, adding chemicals to your bees, you know, it seems so blasphemous, but you know what? It works. Uh, you know, two years ago, I lost all of my bees, and then I started using a little bit of chemicals, and here we go. So. Uh, and by chemicals, I of course mean vitamins, you know. So this essentially is going to replace the vitamins that would normally be in honey. So what naturally would be in nectar. So really, it's not so much adding chemicals to them as really replacing the chemicals that they need to have. I could probably make these uh, honeybee healthy stuff myself but I mostly bought the bottles to get the recipe. <laughs> and uh, when, I, when I run out of these, I'll probably start making it myself. The, the, the recipe, you know, the ingredients on these, it doesn't seem all that complicated. And this stuff is your essential oils. Uh, this uh, really wouldn't be in honey, at least not a lot of it, but this is mostly, uh, I guess I could describe it as like cannabis for bees. It makes them want to eat it more. It also has a nice smell to it, which is very recognizable in the hive, so that I know that if they got uh, this stuff in their honey supers, I'll know about it because I can smell it. And the actual, the most important thing about this is the fact that the oils actually help with the mites. The mites are a really big problem for the bees. So, here we go. Let's get this mixed up. It looks very nice. Smells exactly like Fruit Loops. <laughs> and is very tasty. And the bees will love it as well. Look at that, the bees already found my bucket. The honey bees, their sense of smells is probably as good as a dog's. And uh, when you got something that yummy smelling out in the yard, especially when it's a windy day, the bees find it almost immediately. So here's where I'm gonna be feeding them. I'm gonna be doing some open feeding again this year. It seems to work really well. I'm just going to be doing this on this trailer here with these uh, hydraulic rams. It's just because uh, this location happens to be roughly in the center of where all my beehives are. Now the reason I'm doing open feeding is because, well, I can. Uh, there's, you know, my beehives are the only beehives within, I think, nine or ten miles. I'm not going to have a problem with the neighbor's bees coming and stealing all of my nectar because there are no neighbor's bees close enough to come get it. Uh, bees will fly maybe three miles. So 10 miles is definitely outside of their range. Now these are actually in-hive feeders. Uh, normally I would put these actually inside of the hive, especially if I had a real weak colony and I was just wanting to feed that one hive, I would definitely put it inside. The major problem with that is unless you get that hive sealed up really well, so you know very few bees can come in and out, other colonies around in the area will come and steal that nectar. Now, if I was down in town where there's other beehives in the area, or like I said, if I was trying just to feed the one hive, then 
and I would do it and I would you know bundle them up and make sure the one hive had the best chance of getting the nectar but today I want to feed all of my hives and not all of my hives will actually have these feeders fit so I figure you know if the other bees in the area come and steal the nectar well I may as well let them so I made like a little fake hive here where I'm going to be storing that nectar you know have a lid to keep the weather out of it but the bees will still be able to get in and they'll I imagine within hours from when I load this in there will be bees all over this and they'll be packing it away uh, this uh, five gallons of sugar that I'm going to be putting here by this time tomorrow this will be empty <laughs> so it's also a really easy way to do it I don't have to lug it around to all my hives I can just feed them in one spot okay it looks like the flies are going to want the nectar too but uh, the bees will outcompete the, them in just a little while. Let's uh, pour this in. I do have a funnel this time, but I don't have to worry too much about spilling it because, you know, spilling the honey, the nectar all over the place isn't going to cause the other bees to rob more because it's not really robbing. Because I want them to come get it. Okay, see how long it takes them to find this. My guess is the, the wind is going to mess them up a little bit. They'll be swarming this within the hour. Now that she's found it, she's going to get a bunch, take it back to the hive, and then she'll do a little dance and tell them exactly where it is. That's another reason why the bees are going to out-compete all the other insects. They're just so much better at uh, telling each other where the food is. Okay, so the wind is not getting any better. In fact, it's getting quite a lot worse. There must be a storm coming. But as long as the bees are still flying, it's still okay to open them. It is a fairly warm day, so I'm not too worried about chilling the brood. Now, since it is inclement weather and I haven't opened these guys in a while, I'm going to have to smoke them. I usually try to avoid smoking the bees, but, you know, sometimes it's smart to do so. You know, I know better than opening a hive I haven't opened in months uh, without some smoke. Uh, usually I get away with the bees because they're very gentle, but this is a good idea. <laughs> just give them a little bit, just to let them know I'm here. All right, that will help immensely. Let's open it up. <coughs> the two main things I need to check on today are whether they're honey bound. You know, I need to make sure the queen has room to lay eggs and also whether or not they're making swarm cells. And since this is my strongest hive, I'll be most likely to see either of those here. So, all right. There's some of those dead bees that they couldn't move. Looks like they've got some room to build comb, so they're not that cramped. Let's move the camera over a little closer so you can see what's going on. So you see, they're very calm. Anytime you can wave your hand over top of the hive and not have them come attack you, you know you're doing pretty good. All right, so let me pull out some of these edge frames here. See, there's nothing on them, so they got plenty of room to build comb later on. Got two of them like that. Uh, probably means that uh, once they've got these filled in with honey, they're going to need a super pretty soon. Or, what I'm actually going to do is split the hive. I don't think I'll do that today, but it's definitely something I need to do fairly soon. Yeah, see, this uh, frame here is built onto it, but all the cells are empty. So, that's good. They're, they're ready to start making honey and making bees. And they'll have room to put all the honey and nectar that they collect this spring. Oh my gosh. As soon as I get the hive open, of course, is when the hurricane force winds start. Great. This might be the only hive I get into today. Okay. 
They can see some drones and there's the queen. What luck that I just found her on the third frame. See her right there? Make sure the camera's focused. Yeah, she's right there. Nice and long, good sized queen. Yeah, she's, she's working. Good, good. Okay. Let's see what we got over here. Let me just push the bees aside. There's some capped brood. Yes. And some larvae. So they're coming along just fine. And uh, I see a queen cup, but it's not made into a queen cell. So that means I've got at least another week or so before they th start thinking of swarming. Yeah, this is all full of yeah, all full of eggs. It's all going to be drones. They'll probably make quite a few drones here early on. Let me check to see if that queen cup has an egg inside of it. And it does not. Excellent. Uh, that's really all I needed to know, to be honest. Uh, I can tell that they ate through most of their honey reserves this winter. So they're not honey bound and they don't have queen cells that are developed quite yet. So let's, uh, since it's so windy, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to close up the hive. And uh, I think in about one week, I'm actually going to come. I'm going to take a swarm or a total split from this hive. So I'll probably make a video then. But right now, that's pretty much all I can do. Uh, maybe I'll go move that tree off the other hive. But So here we are at the orange feeder box about uh, one hour later. And as you can tell, the bees are definitely here in force. You can see in there. Here, let's actually pull the lid so you guys can see just how many bees are in there right now. Yeah, so still not a huge amount of bees, but they're, they're definitely coming and getting the nectar. Looks like some of them got wet. Uh, they'll be all right. The other bees will clean them off. that one's small enough to move by hand. Okay, that's better. At least the tree isn't right on top of the hive. I'm sure the bees will enjoy not having to run into that on their way out. But as you can tell, it's, it's very windy. But the bees are still alive and well in there. Look at that. There's a cow's hoof print right where my little tree used to be. And they won't let anything grow. The weight of the tree actually shoved the hive's leg down into the ground a little bit. You can see there. So right about there is where the hive is level. So I'm just going to stick this can under there for now. There. I'll figure Maybe I'll pour some cement down in there to help hold it up. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to call it a day. The wind is getting way too strong to do much anything out here. And uh, tomorrow and the next day is supposed to be stormy. So, yeah, that's it for me this week. Hopefully the wind didn't cause too much uh, sound on the camera. My little mic should have blocked most of it. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you then.